bioceramics. Have you heard of it? It's a category of biocompatible ceramics used in medical procedures. Ahmed Al Ghanam is a professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering and Engineering Science. He's researching the use of bioceramics as a drug delivery system to treat cancer. The bioceramics that I work with has been developed 15 years ago, and I have two U.S. patents uh, for this new bioceramics. This bioceramics is a resorbable and biocompatible ceramic. That is, when it is inserted into the body, it does not elicit immunological response and it helps the cells to produce matrix and tissue. And recently, in the last 10 years, I have geared my research in order to use this bioceramic as a drug delivery system. So the, the project with Dr. Al Ghanam, the, the thought behind it is we, we can find a way to develop a delivery system that gets very high drug concentrations directly into the cancer without that drug spreading beyond the tumor itself. So I uh, approached Ian McCaleb and David Ayunati, who's also a surgeon at Carolina Medical Center, and we work together in order to uh, evaluate the ability of the bioceramics loaded with the anti-cancer drug to treat liver cancer. My role in this is, is I'm trained as a physiologist and pharmacologist, so we use in vivo animal models of liver cancer and in vitro cell culture models of liver cancer to test how efficacious the different formulations of the, uh, the SCPC bioceramics are at, at delivering drugs to treat the cancers. We have done uh, animal studies, two animal studies, and we have done so many cell culture studies, and all have given us very encouraging results. One of the great advantages of uh, Dr. Elganam and I's uh, working relationship is we were fortunate enough to get a research grant from the North Carolina Biotechnology Center to pursue this work as uh, part of a multi-center research grant and uh, that grant is, is coming to completion and we currently have a grant in submission to the National Institutes of Health uh, to try and develop this project using the docs of Rubicin and then hopefully to take this study further uh, for, from small animal research into larger animal models and I think this will be a, a critical step in the translatability of this into, into human treatment and therapy. The use of bioceramic as a delivery system required a lot of engineering of the structure of the ceramic and the chemical composition of the ceramic. So in our lab, we do a lot of work in building the crystalline structure of the ceramic. And we manipulate the position of the atoms within the crystal so that this ceramic would be able to bind uh, the anti-cancer drug so we take the ceramic into many different stages. We prepare the ceramic in the lab. So we start by the raw materials. We go and get the silica, we get the calcium carbonate, we get the raw materials, mix them together, cook them in the furnace to make the ceramic. So it is a bioceramic. After that, um, we take the material, grind it into a smaller particle size, um, we have uh, different sieve meshes where we selected uh, particular um, particle sizes. When these particle sizes are selected, we analyze the particles using uh, an electron microscope. That is uh, a device that allows us to go to higher magnifications, normally like uh, 20,000 magnifications of the grains. And then we can see the porous structures and the size of these porous. And when we are happy with these porous particles, we can start using them for um, loading with drug and then do the drug delivery applications. We have found like two ways to control the material for drug delivery applications. Number one is the porosity of the ceramic, and number two is the phases that the ceramics has at the end. Uh, the porosity, we can control them by pressing the ceramic at different um, levels. And uh, these ceramics are like sponges. They have like big pores and small pores. So what we want with them is that the uh, big pores allows the fluids goes all the way inside the ceramic and small pores, they, they serve like pockets. So um, when we load it with drug, the drug normally uh, is all over the material and can be retained in these small pockets. And uh, for the drug delivery application, this is very nice because they have like a, a longer 
uh, amount of time to take off from the small pockets to the, to the outside um, fluids. Also, uh, we have found that uh, the chemical composition of the ceramics, I mean, the, the faces where that this is uh, compound to, um, they have an effect also in the retention and the, and the rates of release of the, of the drugs. So we, um, what we do to control this thing is just um, make different combinations of different proportions of the silicates and phosphates that we use to prepare the ceramics. And based on that, we can get uh, different proportions of the final uh, phases. We wanted to make this ceramic material serve as a smart material that once the surgeon inserted into the body, it will release the drug in a very controlled fashion releasing a specific dose hourly for a specific period of time to cause complete eradication of the tumor. Then after the treatment, the surgeon just take the tablet out of the patient and the patient is tumor free. This relationship between the university and the medical center, I think really takes a, a theoretically very interesting problem and, and series of projects and provides some really direct translatability to the research. So the studies that we're doing aren't just theoretical drug release kinetics, these are now hands-on translational research into how we can slow and, and regress cancer progression.